Welcome back to the Nevada Department of Wildlife's introduction to fly tying class. I am Jan Nimick and we are building on the basics in lesson three. In lesson two we put together our first fly, the woolly bugger streamer. That happens to be, again, a streamer fly or a wet fly that's used to imitate our larger food sources like bait fish, crayfish, and other big food sources underwater. Second up is our nymph, which is also another type of wet fly. This is going to be our next fly we'll put together in lesson four. This is the beadhead hair's ear nymph. Again, another wet fly used to imitate many of the small insects that are found underwater, the aquatic or semi-aquatic insects. Finally, actually in lesson six, we're going to learn the dry fly. So this is the only floating fly out of the bunch that we're learning to tie. This happens to be an ant and is very, very effective just about anywhere trout are found. We're going to take a quick look at a couple of the more advanced tools available out there. First up is dubbing wax, which we'll use in our next fly, as well as a whip finisher, which is going to tie the final knot to finish the fly. Start with a little thread here. Since we're not really putting together a fly on this one, I don't worry too much about covering the entire shank to create a foundation, but I'm gonna pull out a little bit of thread here off of the spool. I know we've tried to keep it close in and tight so our wraps are nice and neat and not sloppy. But in this case, I'm gonna pull out a little extra thread I'm going to take my dubbing wax, which looks just like paraffin wax, kind of looks like chapstick, and I'm just going to rub, make a couple of gentle rubs across the top of the thread. I'm going to apply a really light coating of that wax on the thread. I'm then going to take some of my dubbing out of the package, and you can, can't hear this enough, can't say this enough. With dubbing and working with dubbing, less is more. So I'm gonna start with an absolute minuscule amount on the end of my finger and just kinda see if I can get it to grab a hold of the thread. So I get a little bit on there. I'm gonna apply my pointer finger and my thumb to the material and apply pressure while turning or pinching and turning um, in a counterclockwise direction if we're looking at the thread. And I'm going to continue to pinch and turn only in that direction until that material looks a lot like our chenille for our woolly bugger body. I now can use this to make those wraps one wrap next to the last to create a body on our fly. Final tool we'll take a look at is the whip finisher. Whip finisher is about the hardest tool in the arsenal to use, but once you learn how to use it, it is incredibly valuable. Much, much faster, much more accurate than those straws and pins. Okay, to use our whip finisher, I'm going to grasp in my right hand between my pointer finger and my thumb. The tool itself wants to spin, so I'm going to actually grasp the outside as well as that ball there and keep it from wanting to rotate and spin. With it in my right hand, I'm going to pull some of the thread out, giving myself plenty of room to work with, and I'm going to place the tool on top of the thread, hooking it, making sure that the left-hand side of the top of the hook is on the outside of the thread, and the thread's going to come up right in the groove cut in the tool, whip finisher itself. It's going to create a U in front of the fly itself. And notice how I'm able to move the thread up and down with the tool. That is the idea or design of the tool. It's made to work with the thread and not against it. From here, I'm going to bring my thread to the left, and I'm going to bring my tool handle and hand to the right, so opposite of each other, keeping them fairly low. We want to try to keep the thread and the handle below the fly as we rotate this around. So we've got our U, thread goes to the left, handle goes to the right. As I move the handle to the right, I'm going to allow it to spin and let go of that rotating part. 
we now have our X. Again, the thread works with the tool so we can move everything together. I'm going to take that X and I'm going to put it right on the fly. And you can see that X is creating those half hitches. Three, four, five. We want to make anywhere from four to seven, eight, nine turns. Um, the thinner the thread or the narrower the thread or finer diameter the thread, um, typically you can get away with uh, or you can't get away with as many wraps. But good safe number to go with is seven. From here, again, our tool works together and you can see the thread actually still kind of moves. At this point, I'm going to drive the front or the front hook down to release that loop off of the back. Once that snaps off, again, I have some movement, so I'm going to pull on the thread and slowly bring that loop and hook up to the fly and release that. That is the whip finish. Again, when you know how to use it, it can be incredibly quick, incredibly accurate, and helps to save lots of time. At this point, to finish our fly, we'd add that adhesive to the head.